Will you read the roll? Ms. Wa. Here. Dr. Selvidge. Here. Dr. Fellow. Here. Ms. Brown. Here. Mr. Hilsman. Here. Mr. Martin. Here. Mr. Osterlin. Here. Ms. Ma. Thank you. We will convene to closed session. Uh, there are four items under closed session, collective bargaining, PCC, CFT, lead negotiator, Dr. Robert Miller, uh, government code 54957.6. Uh, second item, government code 54956.9D1, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, Pasadena City College Faculty Association versus Pasadena Area Community College District. Public Employment Relations Board Unfair Practice Charge Number LACE 5776E. Third item, Government Code 54957, Public Employee Appointment Director EOP and S, Care and Foster Youth Programs. Oh, fifth item, Government Code 54957, Evaluation of Employee Superintendent President. Are there any public comments on the closed session items? Mr. Mr. Rickett. Thank you. I'm Martin, son of Reuben, grandson of Luciano. In praise of Dr. Miller, from one Lancer to another, thank you for, for your 20 years of service. In 2015, I publicly praised you and cara cara vis-a-vis in the office of superintendent. You brought a measure of labor peace to the Lancer home. I said at the time, when F elephants collide, the ants get stomped. The elephants being the, the upper echelon of the college and the ants being the community members and the lowly students. Again, I thank you very much for your many years of service. Thank you, sir. Uh, Item number two, I'm sending uh, the ORCID series of maps. They're my rendition of the Los Angeles County engineer. Thank you, honorable trustees and all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Enriquez. Seeing no further comments from the public, we will now convene to closed session. We have one item to, re oh, I guess we're going to say the pledge, right? So let me have uh, Trustee Fellow, will you lead us in the pledge? Please stand. Place your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Okay, there is one item to report out um, from closed session. So in closed session, on motion of Trustee Selvage and seconded by Trustee Fellow, the board voted to approve the settlement agreement for Pasadena City College Faculty Association versus the Pasadena Area Community College District. Public Employee Relations Board Unfair Practice Charge Number LACE 5776E. This agreement is to resolve PERB decision number 2444 and to make affected employees whole for any losses suffered as a result of the district's 2012-2013 calendar change, including interest at the rate of 7% per annum. The district agreed to pay 214 specified employees each a gross total amount of $5,723.40 
The district also agreed to create a fund of $100,000 to reimburse current full time for their lost deposits for prepaid vacations or for reasonable time spent modifying curriculum due to the cancellation or for other purposes as mutually agreed to by the district and faculty association with regard to the 2013 winter intercession. The vote was unanimous. Members Brown, Hillsman, Selvage, Fellow, Martin, and Osterling have voted in favor and WA have voted in favor of the action. There were no votes against. Okay, so um, we will now convene the open session. And are there any uh, speakers on non agenda items? Trustee Fellow? Do we have B first or not? I'm sorry, introductions, uh, I skipped item B. Introductions and recognitions, Dr. Miller. Well, Trustee Wa, we, we would join me at the podium over there. When I ask Dr. <coughs> Miller, we will uh, oh, recognize sure. Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller, could you join us over there, All right, so I've been asked to read this, except I didn't bring my glasses, so. <laughs> All right, um, proclamation for Dr. Robert Miller. Whereas Dr. Robert Miller has served the Pasadena Area Community College District as an administrator for more than 20 years, and whereas Dr. Miller has performed with distinction as Assistant Superintendent and Senior Vice President for Business and College Services, and whereas Dr. Miller's service to our college has spanned a wide range of roles, including educational services, academic affairs, business and financial services, human resources, strategic planning, and community engagement, to name but a few. And whereas Dr. Miller's tenure as interim superintendent president was distinguished by a marked improvement in campus climate, collegiality, and school spirit, and whereas Dr. Miller's colleagues speak highly of his strategic guidance, fiscal stewardship, good humor, and unparalleled knowledge of California's community college system, and whereas Dr. Miller has raised our college's profile across California and the nation through his service and leadership on bodies including the Community College League of California and the American Association of Community Colleges, and whereas Dr. Miller is a proud PCC alumnus, having earned his associate's degree in communications here in 1975, and whereas Dr. Miller is a hallmark of our community with more than 30 years service as a member of the Pasadena Terminal Roses Association, including three on the association's executive board, and whereas our colleagues on the Board of Trustees and throughout the faculty, staff, and administration of Pasadena City College wish Dr. Miller well as he continues his career. Now, therefore, well. I, Ragan Verdian, Superintendent President of Pasadena City College. And I, Linda Waugh, President of the Pasadena Area Community College District Board of Trustees, proclaim our college's appreciation for Dr. Robert Miller. If I, if I may, um, I'll start with a bad joke. Uh, Forty years from now, when my obituary is going to be written, I'm going to ask them to use this, okay? Uh, very bad joke. But um, I just had to say that uh, I'm touched, I'm honored, I'm humbled uh, by this, uh, this amazing honor. Um, I've spent a good part of my life at this institution. Uh, I love the college dearly. I certainly love our students and our faculty and our staff. And, and the special place that, that, that PCC is. Um, the opportunities that have been afforded to me here have been um, significant and beyond uh, my personal and professional dreams. Um, so I, I, I will just end this with a personal thanks to the board 
uh, for your support uh, over the years, those of you who have been here, and certainly for the warm welcome of, the, of our, our two newest board members, and uh, give sincere appreciation. And certainly to Dr. Verdian, who um, under awkward circumstances, I would say, uh, was an incredible leader, colleague, friend, and I think, uh, I think we worked very, very well together, and I will always be grateful. And I'm only leaving the college because um, the opportunity to make a difference, to be of service to the degree that I think that I can be and I will work very hard to be in the LA Community College District was one that uh, just really, really intrigued me a great deal. And certainly Dr. Rodriguez uh, is, a, is a fine a chancellor, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So with that, I'll say thank you to everyone once again. And I'll be here till the 31st, so I'm not going anywhere quite yet. But again, thank you all very, very much. We'll take a 10-minute break. We have a cake for you, Dr. Miller, over there, all right?
The Board of Trustees meeting will now come to order again. Okay. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> well, I know Dr. Miller will be missed by everyone and yeah, so certainly that was a very long proclamation, but well, well deserved. Sorry about that. Thank you. <laughs> no, it was well deserved. Okay, so we are now on item C, public comment on non-agenda items. Trustee Fellow. Yes, thank you. Um, after that wonderful commendation and the wonderful cake, that's great. Um, it's apropos to have Julie Kiotis come up. She has a comment to make. Good evening, all. My name is Julie Kiotis, and I'm president of the Faculty Association and lead negotiator for the faculty. I'd like to publicly I'm sorry, I don't usually speak from notes, so this is new for me. Um, I would like to publicly, sincerely thank Dr. Miller for the hard work he has led at the negotiating table. Dr. Miller has been lead negotiator for the district for the past two years. In that time, we have made more progress than we have made over the past 10 years. And I know that personally because I have been at the negotiating table for all 10 of those years. Dr. Miller uh, actively listens to issues and advocates for what he believes. I assure you that we have not always agreed, but we do always agree that the students and the mission are at the center of everything that we do at the negotiating table and everything that we do here on this campus. He listens for why people say what they do and seeks a solution to the issues. He has a can-do spirit that will be missed by the faculty on our campus. He holds the belief that we are doing a great job, but that we can always do better. We will miss your continuous improvement of our campus, but please remember, since you work all of the time, we have your cell phone number and you're not finished with us yet. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kears. Thank you very much. And our next speaker today is uh, Christopher Villalobos, who will speak on the VA clinic. Good evening. Uh, my name is Christopher Marvin Villalobos. I served in the United States Army four years. I was a tanker. I did one tour. I am still in the Army Reserves. As a sergeant, I work in civil affairs. And my time spent here has been nothing but admirable. I really do enjoy Pasadena City College. Most people, when they talk about junior colleges, they don't talk much about it. They think you have to go to some UC to be extinguished, to be dis distinguished as a great student, but this place has a special place in my heart, and especially the v Veterans Resource Center. And I wanna note something to you guys on a few topics. Uh, we've gathered over 300 signatures so far in petitions for students to support us. Today, I went to the Student Body Association board meeting and it was a unanimous vote for them in support to back us up for this VA clinic and I understand there's still some talk over whether this is a good idea or not and there are things things beyond my comprehension that I understand that is a complicated procedure but I'm asking each and every one of you to reconsider this this thing that would create a legacy for this campus and for these students I mean I've gone to West LA hospital and I've spent I, a whole day. I think when I when I first got back from the United States Army, from Georgia, Fort Benny is originally where I was stationed. I spent the whole day from morning to the time they close, just waiting to get seen for a foot. And right now, I have a fractured finger. And yes, I could drive about two hour drive, depending on traffic on the 405. Each and every one of you know about the traffic on the 405 or on any freeway for this matter and how inconvenient it can be at times. So I can urge you that this clinic is in favor, not only for the soldiers, for the, the sailors, for the Marines, for every, for every student on campus. This creates something to take even more pride in. And I, each, I urge each and every one of you to think about this and place this on your agenda. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it.
Madam President, that's uh, it for tonight. Thank you. At this time, we are on item D, approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move approval of minutes. Second. Approved by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee Hilsman. Are there any comments, discussion? May I have the advisory vote? Aye. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> we are now on item E, approval of consent items. I just want to uh, remind the trustees that we have a change in process and the trustee Selvage has been appointed by me to recognize any of the trustees who want to speak, so please signal him if you want to speak on any of the items and, uh, and he will recognize you. Um, so may I have approval for, are there any, may I have approval for all the consent items? I, before that, I had a quick question on one consent item and. Um, Which item is that, trustee? Um, this was under the contracts and it was on my list of questions and I did receive the answer. I'm not asking that we pull it off the consent calendar, but I did have a follow-up question. This was about the website design contract. So, so why don't we pull that item off so we can have further discussion? Do you know the item number? It's uh, contract B160282. B160282. Correct. Trustee Watt, excuse me, uh, but there is a revised consent item 196B in your uh, brown folders. Okay. Just, uh, and there's a cover memo in, in there, but it has to do with just a change of, a, of an account code, that's all. <coughs> right, yeah. All right, so may I have approval for all consent items and minus uh, B160282 and B196B? Linda. Right, I'd also like uh, uh, to pull one of the, uh, pull this off. Uh, it's the <coughs> B160286 and B1620291. Right. right, those are two uh, consulting contracts. Read those numbers again, Trustee Selvage. Okay, B160286. <coughs> Uh, Fairbank, uh, Mazin, okay. et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then the next one on the list, B160291, the Lou Edwards Group. Right. Madam President, I'll make a motion to approve the other consent items. Thank you, Trustee Fellow. May I have a second? Second. Second from Trustee Osterling. Advisory vote? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent items minus the three, the four items that were pulled off has been passed unanimously. Let's take the items one by one. So B160282, Trustee Osterling. Uh, very quickly, this is a um, contract for website design. And as I understand it, this is for a consortium of 24 community colleges and high schools, I think 16 and eight. And if I understand correctly, uh, PCC is paying for the entire amount. And so I wanted to um, uh, seek clarification on that from staff. Dr. Verdi and doc, or, uh, Dean Davila can respond. Dean Davila. <coughs> Hi, good evening, trustees. Uh, LA High Tech is a consortium made up of eight community colleges and 16 high schools. It's one of the initial 12 California Career Pathways Trust Grants. Pasadena City College is the fiscal lead of that large consortia where we have external partners as well as business industry groups helping us in that regard. So as a fiscal agent, we're responsible for any consortia-wide expenditures, and that's why we receive the bulk of the funding to extend a contracts to that regard to our consortia members. So, so we're receiving the bulk of the funding and, and we uh, Correct. are responsible for the expenses for the entire consortium. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so may I? May I have a, a motion to approve item 160282? So moved. Second. So moved by Trustee Osterling, seconded by Trustee Fellow. Advisory vote? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item B196B. Whose item was that? Oh, that was the one I. It's, it's oh, a revised well, item. That's that was right. In that's the, the revised. That's the revised item. 
Uh, no, I think they had. No, uh, we, pu we pulled it. Pulled it for a separate vote. Okay, so so Dr. Miller, you said that the only thing that changed on this was the the account code. The account code. Right from from one zero 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 to one zero one nine hundred. That okay. was the only change. So move approval. So moved by Trustee Hillsman. Second. Seconded by Trustee Brown. Advisory vote. Aye. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So item B160286, Trustee Selvage. Yes. Okay, yeah. 286 and 291 will be heard at the same time. Trustee Selvage. Yeah, yeah my, my question is, this is a, uh, these are contracts uh, that would, uh, in, in connection with the Centennial Facilities Master Plan, and uh, we got a schedule which suggested that uh, uh, we would try and uh, uh, put the plan, well, this would be a survey to see you know, what sort of public support there is, and then one of them through a, through a survey, the other is a contract for just sort of general advice on uh, going out with a bond issue. Uh, when I looked at the schedule that we received, uh, I think it was yesterday, on what the uh, uh, steps were remaining on the facilities master plan, I was con I'm very concerned that uh, uh, it's unrealistic to think we can uh, put together the master plan in time to uh, do everything else that needs to be done in order to have uh, an item on the ballot in November. And I. Uh, look back very thoroughly at uh, the notes I have from the meetings that, uh, that I've attended as the uh, chair of the, uh, what is it called, Bob? Budget and Audit Committee. Budget and audit no, no, the other, uh, no, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the facilities, um, Centennial Facilities Master Plan Working Group. The ad, ad hoc. The ad hoc. Right, yeah, the, right, the ad hoc. And uh, the, the last uh, presentation we had on the, Centennial Facilities Master Plan was almost one year ago today. Uh, uh, I looked at the schedules there, and to me, they just don't seem to mesh. And uh, I'm very concerned that uh, if we, tr well, one, that it would be premature to do a, uh, uh, a survey if we're uh, not going to do the uh, uh, bond in November. And two, I'm, uh, like I say, very concerned uh, and don't see how we could possibly get it finished in that time. The the purpose of uh, this, uh, these two contracts is not to talk about a bond measure. The purpose of these two contracts is based on the information that we currently have available, given the age of the campus, the nature of the buildings in which we are providing instruction to our students, and also on the state's lack of desire to provide significant funding to the college to address the ongoing maintenance of the various buildings we have on campus. <clears throat> As part of uh, our fiduciary responsibility, administration needs to be able to advise the board as to the direction the college is going. And based of info on information that we currently have available, we have a campus that is 93 years old. We have multiple buildings on campus that need significant renovation. And on a regular basis, sometimes weekly, we have significant issues with facilities that lead to thousands and thousands of dollars of the operation and uh, one problem leads to another. In addition to that, we are currently being asked to provide additional services in the northwest of Pasadena. The PUSD is making available to us a building. And for us to be able to renovate that building and offer an appropriate number <coughs> of courses at that building would require a significant amount of money which we do not have. We have a foothill campus that has a significant number of modular units. And uh, that campus cannot provide the type of instruction that we would like to provide over there, specifically in the areas of career technical education and also in non-credit instruction that we need to be able to deliver over there. And uh, we have had instructors coming over here 
telling us about the lack of facilities that we have at the Foothill campus. We also are very hard pressed to provide instruction in the southeast area of this campus, of this uh, district in the uh, Rosemead area. We currently have uh, a lease agreement with the Almonte Union School District and uh, that lease will be coming to an end very soon and we don't own the building there. And yet that's an area where a significant number of FTEs is being generated. If we are going to be advising the board as to something in the southeast area of our district where we could ultimately create a center in the next several years, we would receive a significant amount of money from the state if we have the status of center for one of our satellite campuses and that would generate close to about $1.2 million that we would receive in addition to the funding that we are getting. The purpose of, of uh, getting into those two contracts is motivated <coughs> not entirely by the Centennial Facilities Master Plan, which will take some time to complete. And uh, the college has been working on that Facilities Master Plan for the past three years or so. And uh, the information that we have on that Master Plan currently is not information that needs to be very specific, but it has to be information that is of a general nature that will let administration understand what kind of recommendation that we need to be making to the board at the appropriate time. Given that we have hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, construction, renovation, that need to happen at the campus, at the satellite areas, uh, the Northwest, the Foothill Campus, and the Southeast, administration needs to be able to inform the board at the appropriate time during the year as to how we are going to provide the instruction, how we are going to fix the various buildings that we have. And on top of that, we have a building that is currently, that has been number one on the state list for several years. But because the state has not done anything, we are still having several of our programs in cramped quarters, in modular units, and our students are not getting the benefits. We worked with uh, Lou Edwards Group to request advice. And Lou Edwards Group has had a history in the state of advising community colleges on how to obtain funding to fund the various construction projects that they have on their campus. And uh, those projects does not have to be the exact specific project as long as you have a general idea as to what those buildings are and what you will be providing in those buildings. The second contract is based on the FM3 informing us based on some kind of surveying and polling that they might be doing in our district as to what is the general feeling towards the college so that once we get that information and we get the advice from Lou Edwards Group, administration can come to the board at the appropriate time, sometimes in August or early September, to inform the board as to what direction we would like to ask you to go. And based on the information that we have received from Lou Edwards and from uh, other districts in uh, Southern California, that it would be an appropriate time for us to do that kind of surveying and that kind of polling so that we can inform the board as to what we need to be doing. The best example that we have right now is Long Beach City College is placing on the ballot, they're calling a special election for June, where they're going to be asking their uh, constituents to vote on an $850 million bond and they had a bond for about 200 million in the year 2003. College of the Canyons is uh, asking uh, their constituents to vote <coughs> at the June election this year for close to uh, $300 million so that they can proceed with their renovations. 
Uh, Glendale Community College District is looking at doing the same thing. And to get back to College of the Canyons, in 2006, they went to the electorate and uh, did $160 million. And Glendale Community College is looking at doing more or less the same thing. And all the other districts in our area, in, our, in Southern California, understanding the needs that they have for buildings so that they can provide the best instruction to their students, and knowing that the state has put construction and renovations of buildings on the back burner, are trying to approach their electorate and find out whether there is support for that kind of uh, movement or not. And if there is support, and we feel, the administration feels that it is important for administration to make that recommendation, at that point we will come to the board and make that recommendation to the board. For now, all we are asking is for the board <coughs> to approve us entering into those two contracts so that we can get that information that is so necessary for us to be able to advise you so that you can make an informed decision as to what we should be doing. Uh, two questions. Uh, when would they complete the work? When would they start and, and complete approximately? If we enter into the agreement tomorrow, we've been informed that FM3 will be able to complete that work before the end of April and provide us with the information. Mm -hmm. They will conduct the surveying in three languages, in English, in Spanish, and in Mandarin. They're going to survey the whole district. Have, have they decided if they would... Uh uh, tell us what results they got from what areas? They will provide that kind of yeah. information, yes. Yeah. Okay, and it says in the agenda package here that to determine whether the priority set forth in the district facilities master plan. Now, I think we got some sort of priorities a year ago when we had a briefing, but uh, have, they, have those been updated or are uh, they written down someplace we, right now? We are working with SGA. We will be calling a meeting of uh, the subcommittee of the board to have HGA meet with the group so that HGA can give us not a finished product, but at least a product that will come very close to what we would need to be able to uh, work with the board and provide the information that the board would need. And when, at what, what stage is that you're speaking of? Uh, HGA, HGA will be meeting with us so that we can set up a meeting with the subcommittee of yeah. the board as quickly okay. as possible. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? So to summarize, uh, that what is before us on these contracts is just to approve an information gathering, so consulting to go out to our communities for information gathering. We are not approving this based on the master plan, which has not yet been presented. Um, so we're just looking at a consulting service. So if no other questions, may I have an advisory vote? Aye. All those in? Uh, we sorry. need a motion for approval. Oh, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I move that My we goodness. <laughs> I move approval. President in training may have a motion. <laughs> <laughs> move approval of consent item 185B, both second. of them. <laughs> second. I'll second Thank it. you. And second by, so moved by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee Selvage. May I have the advisory vote? Aye. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for keeping me on my toes, Trustee Brown. <laughs> okay, actions recommended for approval. Item F, receipt of fiscal year 2014-15 PCC Foundation audit. President Verdian. I'm going to ask Executive Director Bobby Abraham to introduce the auditor who will present the Thank audit Thank you very much. Uh, we are pleased to present this audit to you tonight. Uh, just yesterday, this was presented to the Foundation Board of Directors and approved unanimously, and I'd like to introduce Heather McGee from Vizenti, Lloyd, and Stutzman, who worked with us very closely on this. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for having me come out tonight to present the Foundation Audit Report. The Foundation is an organization formed independent of the district. However, due to the relationship with the district, I'm here presenting the audit report to you tonight. We did meet with the Foundation's Audit Committee to go over the report thoroughly back in January. Um, but there's three things that are key in communicating what the audit report contains. So I'm happy to 
um, present to you the audit report that has been given an unqualified opinion or also known as a clean opinion. Um, what that means is that the numbers that are presented in the financial statements can be relied upon. Also another important uh, information to do with the audit is whether there were any audit adjustments. I'm sorry, there's an echo. <laughs> there are no audit adjustments associated with the audit report as well as there is not a management letter issued this year. Are there any questions for the board? Um, uh, Go ahead. Well, first, is there an extra copy of this readily available? Yeah, right here. Because I don't think Trustee Osterling I never, received that. never got the actual book. Thank oh, you. Well, that, that's why. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so I have two O big overview questions, and it's not actually related to the audit in the terms of the numbers being accurate and, and that, but just, um, and I'm asking to be reminded who the, who our foundation representative is to the board. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes. great. So maybe you can. I'll answer whatever questions you You can have. either answer or just note my yeah. comments for future meetings. So on page four, which is the statement of activities, uh, first I'm thrilled in the fact that program services went from 1.9 million to 2.8 million, which implies about $900,000 of more general good that was accomplished this year than the prior year, at least in its oversimplistic form to me. And so that's commendable to the foundation and I want to express my appreciation for that. Um, I obviously am a bit touch, a touch of concern that the unrestricted fund was at a negative $474,000. I realize there's good years and bad years. And I just, um, I know we have a phenomenal foundation board, but obviously that's not a sustainable thing if this is a trend and just would like some assurance from either our representative or our, our <coughs> staff that the board is on top of that question. Okay, now it's fine, I guess. Yeah, reassure me now. Sorry, I'll let manage, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, echoing my concern that I talk about almost ad nauseum uh, with the foundation board members. One of the things that we are planning to do, well, first of all, let me, let me back up and, and let you know that we see the issue, we know that it's there, and we have a philosophy that we call theoretical cash, which basically means any time we see that kind of issue coming up, we make sure that we have money in the bank uh, in an unrestricted, uh, short-term account that can cover that at any time. So, for so that the concern of real cash is has been addressed. Um, the second thing is unrestricted money is the most difficult money to raise. And as you know, we raised a lot of money last year through a gala, and it was mostly restricted. And so immediately we began to talk about moving into a major gifts campaign. And once again, a major gifts campaign raises a lot of money, and a lot of times that is, is restricted money. So we have added a fifth element to the four initiatives that Dr. Verdian has outlined for us, and that is an annual fund so that we are not only talking about the needs of college, but we are talking about the unrestricted needs of the foundation. The reason that I'm recommending that we move in that direction is that you actually raise more unrestricted money when you're asking for restricted money than you do if you're asking for unrestricted money. So what, what tends to happen is people identify their passions with specific areas of the college, but once they hear your case, they identify their general overall loyalty to the college and many of those gifts come in unrestricted. So we are pushing forward in our development efforts to address that exact issue. Um, and in that context, uh, I would had in the board notes to the superintendent raised the question of perhaps an appropriate indirect rate 
that might be allowable to be charged to even some of the temporarily restricted to as an appropriate cost to manage that and ask that maybe the board, the foundation and yourself consider under your watchful tutelage some kind of appropriate indirect rate to recap some of that in an in a acceptable way. Um, a second or a third comment, if you call that my second, if the indirect rate is my second comment, my third comment is both a question and a note that um, in looking at the tempor temporarily restricted income, I see investment income of 535,000 and I also see a realized and unrealized loss of minus 163,000. And realizing that this was a June 30 close and kind of vaguely remembering back that Though the market today has been very volatile and there's been a lot of down markets that have happened, not so June 30 seems like June 30 was more or less a, a kind of a high mm -hmm. period. And so I guess I'm a little bit mm -hmm. surprised to see a realized and unrealized loss of 163,000 and thought maybe our auditors could elaborate briefly mm -hmm. on that. Go to the next page. Go to the un I'm on the statement of activities. Right. So since the statement of activities is a snapshot at June 30th, or the investment um, fair value is a snapshot at June 30th, it can it can change. And I, I do work with a handful of other college foundations, and this is very common. And they had similar activities this year. But the statement of activities is for a period, and the period is the entire year ending June 30. Right. So it's not necessarily just the investment. You know, it could have been sold July of 14. I get it. But I guess I'm just a little surprised to see that size of a loss. Right. And is the investment income that's not realized or unrealized gains, I assume then that is just purely dividends? Interest well, realized in dividends gains is um, when the investment's actually sold, so you're actually realizing those gains at that moment that you've um, made that transaction. Where the unrealized gains is the, the what sometimes is referred to as a paper loss, and that's the as of June 30th, the change in the value, um, the fair value of the investment. Yeah, but the realized and unrealized gains are consolidated into the minus 163 okay. with the other income investment net of expenses of a positive 535. So that says to me. You made a tremendous amount of interest income and dividends, but the things you actually sold, you sold for a loss, and there might have been some things you didn't sell that were recognized as a loss as of June 30, which again, I'm just a little shocked at because that was kind of a high. Well, if you, if you turn to page 12, um, okay. the dif interest and dividends are all on the financial statements are included in the interest income, where if you refer to page 12, there's an additional footnote for the investments, and the realized gains is 295,000 for the current year, and the unrealized um, losses makes up the significant difference. Yeah, that's just, okay, so that almost exasperates my question that it just seems like a very high unrealized loss for June 30, but again, I'll leave that, you You know, I know it's a phenomenal board, I'm sure they're all over that, and I'll leave that. It's a very engaged board, <laughs> and they have an investment committee who's pouring over the investment state statements and meeting yeah. with the, the investment broker. Um, so if you in, my, in my experience, this is really common with the other foundations that I okay. audit at June 30th. So just, just to hit it and leave it. You know, if you would have said to me at the end of January 16 or February 16, you had an unrealized loss, I would have said, I get it. It's just the June 15 Sorry. unrealized loss, I don't quite get. But I'll leave that for you to take to them and... But we, as the, the ultimate fiduciary of this, I think it's important for us to let you know that we are watchful of this, as is our, you know, duty to do so. So, so if I can just comment, not necessarily on this item, but um, as a new member of a uh, new liaison to the board, to the uh, foundation, uh, it's been a steep leaning, a learning curve for me, obviously, and I've enjoyed uh, meeting and working already with Bobby and attending the uh, executive board meeting and the, um, and the board of directors meeting. And uh, John, to your point, um, this issue was also raised and addressed at that meeting. There is concern. Uh, I, my sense is we have an incoming president. I think the outgoing president 
in my short tenure seems to have been doing a terrific job. Uh, Jim Sarney is the new president who has extensive investment experience, I believe, Bobby, uh, more than extensive. Um, so this is something that's being uh, seriously uh, addressed. There's a lot of concern about it. Uh, also, I would say that um, the outgoing president uh, set some very ambitious and I thought admirable goals for the foundation. Uh, and talking not just about the dollars and cents of raising money, but also the goals for the college of what, what they might, uh, in the long range, um, accomplish. Kind of what-if goals. He had four, uh, and I, I wonder if, um, if Bobby would be able to email to the board a sort of a press of that, because I found it very impressive. It's a vision for the future for the board. I think that there's a lot of buy-in for that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an ambitious uh, 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 look at the mission for the, for the foundation uh, that, that I think could really be of great help and support for the college. So, uh, Bobby, if you can uh, send it Viridian, to me. President Viridian, would that I'll be acceptable to you? Yes. That would be acceptable. Jim? So I, I have a follow-up question to John's question, to Trustee Martin. Um, could we... Um, uh, Trustee Hillsman, could you follow up and see what the unrealized um, losses are as of, say, the end of February and see if the situation is... Right. I, I was going to suggest that, and uh, maybe with the help of the staff, um, we can take a look, actually, we can do a snapshot of June 2015, because my memory's foggy on that. My, my investment portfolio is not large enough to track this <laughs> very <laughs> diligently, but... Uh, I think you're right, and we'll take a look at that. And I, I think, Trustee Osterling, what you're asking is uh, a little more sp specificity about the nature of the investments. Oh, just just to see where it's gone since then. What what Trustee Martin was saying was, is the market was in pretty good shape at June 30th of last year, and it's deteriorated since then. And so the concern would be is that the unrealized loss has yeah. increased. Right. Okay. I have a three small questions in the short. Uh, and one observation, uh, yeah, the questions that they asked about uh, sustainability of uh, the uh, uh, Elim Asinari activities that you engage in here, if you can, if that's sustainable, that occurred to me when I, I saw the figures, uh, uh, the good stuff going up and uh, the, the balance sheet, if you will, sort of going down a bit. Um, is it legally required for this audit to be presented to PCC? Okay. It is required. That, okay, that, yeah, that's what I thought. I think we've got this around the same time as we got the audits for the college. Uh, are we going to return to having getting these about the same time as we get the overall audit for the college? Right. The, the answer is yes, we, we Okay. We okay. tend to get back on that schedule. Right, yes, okay. Trustee Selvage. And then the third, short, small question. Uh, you're not an attorney, neither am I, but I'm going to ask you a legal question anyway. What is the uh, description of the legal relationship between PCC and the foundation? It's, quote, independent, but there's a connection because the, you have to submit an uh, audit for the foundation to us. So, Right. There is, there, is, there is a related party footnote in the back of the, okay. um, of the disclosure with, um, it, it's twofold. The, for uh, governmental accounting standards, the district has to evaluate and evaluate uh, several different criterion, and management has reviewed it and determined, okay, it, the, uh, the activities of the foundation does not need to be reported in the district financial mm -hmm. report. The term independent, um, there's, there's an auxiliary manual that's getting updated, and uh, independent can mean several different things. Okay. <laughs> um, it could be independent uh, in the terminology if it's as it's not organized under education codes versus um, organized under California business codes. And I was having that discussion with Bobby um, earlier, and we're going to look at some additional documentation that she has regarding that. Thank you. So I have a comment, but not on the fiscal uh, report. And since Trustee Hillsman uh, commented on the, the board looking at the goals, one of the things I brought up in the past, and I hope it is something that we look at seriously, is using and, and, and I guess, culling or, or, or cultivating uh, donations for um, not just scholarships, but more for internships. 
because I think that uh, the ability for students to be able to get um, that experience in the workplace as part of their education, but as a paid experience, so uh, uh, many of our students are part-time and have to work, I think it's very valuable. It, in fact, I think many um, reports on scholarships versus internships shows a much more positive relationship for the students back from internships. So I hope that is something that the board will look at as one of the goals. <coughs> Okay, no further questions. So, may I have a motion to approve? Motion to receive the foundation financial receive audit. The, okay, second. So, so, motion made by Trustee Fellow, seconded by Trustee Selvage. Advisory vote? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Item G, adoption of resolution number 548 authorizing refinancing of Pasadena Area Community College District 2016, <laughs> general obligation refunding of bonds. President Verdian. Well, before I turn uh, this over to uh, Assistant Superintendent Dr. Miller, I want to thank the Budget and uh, Audit Subcommittee of uh, the Board that met on Monday and made a recommendation to college administration to see to it that we have a financial consultant working on behalf of the college to review our documents. We have seen the merit of that recommendation and we are proceeding accordingly. And I'm asking Dr. Miller now to introduce our guest. I'd be, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, first of all, again, uh, sincere thanks to the board subcommittee for their support um, and uh, guidance uh, at the Monday meeting. I'm gonna turn this over to our executive director of business services, Joe Simoneshi, who will, who will uh, introduce our guests and also uh, engage in a very short presentation. Yes, thank you. Uh, so tonight the district is requesting approval of agenda item G, which is the adoption of resolution number 548, authorizing the refinancing of the Pasadena Area Community College District's general obligation bonds for uh, refunding. Uh, the administration did meet with the budget and audit subcommittee on Monday and answered questions related to the documents that have been going back and forth. Uh, in addition, the administration is sourcing a pricing consultant to support the process per the request of the board subcommittee. Uh, tonight we have with us Rod Carter, who is the managing director with RBC Capital Markets, Markets who is our underwriter, and Diane Kwan, who is our partner, who is a partner with Hopkins, Delafield, and Wood, our bond council. So I'm now going to turn it over to Mr. Carter, who will go through the presentation that is before you uh, and answer uh, questions afterwards. Thank you. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you about this very important topic. So we've, we've been sending updates to the district for about a year about this opportunity, and the good news is that it's only gotten better because rates have stayed low. Um, wish we could predict rates, but of course none of us can. The Fed met today and decided not to raise rates. <clears throat> They're continuing to watch the economy. But you have the opportunity on about 37 million of your bonds to refinance them and to lower the interest rates for your taxpayers. These include the, the 2006 Series B and the 2009 Series D. Under current market conditions, you can lower your interest rate from 4.94 to a 2.38. This is, creates about $7 million in savings for your taxpayers. The net present value savings are around 16%. Generally, uh, we recommend doing a fina uh, refinancing if your savings are at a minimum 3% and between 3 and 5%. As you can see, they're significantly above that. We were asked by staff, well, how does this relate to the taxpayers? You have a very large tax base. So per $100,000, it's not a lot of money to the taxpayer, but you can still reduce, on $37 million, you're gonna reduce your interest by around $7 million based on today's market rates. That's a, a chunk of change. And that's after cost. That's after your cost. And then I was asked also to lay out what the cost of issuance would be and these are the estimated cost as well. One last thing I wanted to mention on the first page was we did a sensitivity analysis. What if rates go down 20 basis points from where they are right now? What if they go up 20 basis points? Uh, just to give you an idea of what happens when rates change. Of course, the rates are not finalized until after the board, if the board decides to 
proceed on this refinancing, and then we lock in the interest rates at a later date. May I answer any questions about any of this? Any questions? Oh. Trustee Salvage? Yes, in, in the absence of any questions, I uh, just want to mention that uh, uh, this is a really good deal for PCC. Uh, it's comparable to uh, somebody refinancing a, uh, a uh, home mortgage uh, when interest rates have fallen. Uh, one thing I'd note here, and if you were watching the figures uh, of the tables that were going up here, we're not extending the uh, term of the, of the obligation. What we're doing is reducing the annual obligation for the same term, and uh, after uh, uh, all the costs and everything is, is, it was mentioned, uh, uh, we're still uh, well ahead. Uh, you know, I've, I've been involved in uh, public facilities, bonds, and stuff like that. I'm familiar, uh, gosh, Trustee uh, uh, Osterling is, and uh, Trustee Martin's been through this a few times before in the last 36 and a half years. So, uh, uh, you know, we're all pretty familiar with this. Uh, it was a great opportunity on uh, Monday to go through this in detail, uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, pleased that the college is going to uh, retain a uh, at this stage in this overall effort, uh, a pricing consultant. Uh, so we have a, uh, somebody on our, our side that has a uh, fiduciary duty to PCC and is expert and all that, and that's a normal thing for these types of transactions. So uh, all in all, it looks like a, a really good deal, and uh, uh, taxpayers should be uh, happy. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Selvage. Are there any comments or any questions for the consultants? I just want to thank the staff the, uh, and the committee for the work on this. It's really, uh, it's terrific news. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think this is outstanding. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank and I'll second it. <laughs> so a motion made by Trustee Fellows, seconded by Trustee Brown. Advisory vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item H. Adopt the resolution 547, Reserves for Contingencies, 2015-2016. President Verdian. We're asking the board to approve the transfer of, that, of uh, the $1,770,000 so that we can meet the obligations that we have to meet uh, based on the PERB ruling. Dr. Miller, is there anything you want to add to that? Uh, just to remind the board that there is an explanatory memo uh, in their packets. I think you've had a chance to take a look at that. Uh, this does allow us to fund the PERB ruling and, and a couple of other things that, that grew out of that. Uh, and um, this was money that we had budgeted. Uh, so it, 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 we're just moving it from the reserve for contingencies line in our, in our budget to the actual operating budget so that we can pay these obligations. Questions? Uh, I, I have one. Trustee Selvage. Uh, right. On the, uh, well, the page where it describes recommendation, fiscal implications, background, uh, it says adopting, a, adopting reserves for contingencies, but isn't this, in fact, a transfer of funds in the contingency to mm -hmm. another account to p make the uh, $1.7 million payment? Um, contingencies. That, that, that is correct. So do we need to change the wording in the resolution? I'm not sure. We, we've I, used I this resolution in the past without any <coughs> particular issues, uh, but I think we're, I mean, I, I, I don't think it would matter if we, if we went ahead and uh, made that change. Yeah, clarify this. It's, it's not sure. setting it aside as a reserve for contingency or putting in. It's, it's coming out of there and going to that other account. So, okay, thank you. So I move approval that we adopt the resolution 547. With, with the changes, I guess, with to the, the wording. With the changes, yes. Okay, so motion made by Trustee Brown. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Hilsman. Advisory vote? Aye. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item I. Approval of negotiated collective bargaining agreement, CBA, between the Pasadena City College, California, Federation of Teachers, Local 6525, PCC, CFT, and the Pasadena Area Community College District, known as District, for July 1, 2014 through June 30th, 2017. We're asking the board to approve uh, this uh, 
negotiated collective bargaining agreement and uh, the funding to meet this uh, obligation is included in the 2015-2016 adopted budget. Dr. Miller, anything we want to add? Uh, nothing to add other than a sincere thanks to the uh, PCC CFT unit for negotiating in very good faith. Sincere thanks to Julie Mosier and the HR staff for uh, working diligently on this. And this does uh, bring this contract to current uh, and um, puts this in good stead for the next round of negotiations. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. Moved by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee Fellow. Any discussion? Advisory vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We are now on information items. J, Superintendent President's report. Well, thank you, Trustee Wa. I want to congratulate uh, Ms. Uh, Nikki Dixon. We approved her today in the council calendar as director of EOPS Care and Foster Youth Services. Nikki Dixon, congratulations. Uh, I am pleased to report that we have identified a commencement speaker for this year's uh, ceremony. Uh, our students will hear an inspiring address from Paula Madison, a veteran media executive and former owner of the Los Angeles Sparks WNBA team. Ms. Madison most recently addressed uh, current and future students at the College Success Symposium hosted by our Asian Pacific Islander Advisory Committee in February. Ms. Madison has a beautiful story to share with us. She was born of immigrant parents in Harlem and lived on food stamps, but she worked very hard because her family believed in the power of education. She ended up going to Vassar College and then worked in the TV world and ended up in California as the CEO of NBC4. Mm -hmm. And she currently is the CEO of her own company and she did make a trip to China to find her grandparents, and she was able to locate them in the Guangdong province, China. It's a very inspirational speaker that our students will be listening to. Last week, I had the opportunity to read at Washington Elementary School in Northwest Pasadena. As part of my outreach to the community, I was invited to attend the school and reach to the students, and it was indeed a pleasure to be in a fourth grade classroom sharing stories from fourth grade books to the students. And uh, they were all very excited at knowing that I worked up at Pasadena City College because it is their dream to come to Pasadena City College, and we want to make sure that this dream comes true. On Wednesday of last week, uh, together with a group of uh, administrators of the college. I was at the San Marino City Council to share with them what is happening at Pasadena City College and how the college is working with the San Marino School District and with the city of San Marino to help promote education and economic and workforce development. I was warmly received, so were college staff by the city mayor and the city council as well as the fire marshal, Mark Phillips, who is also an adjunct instructor in our fire technology program. And it was indeed a beautiful thing to be able to be in the community and address th the folks about what is happening at the college. Members of our staff were pleased to share our Pathways program with nearly 100 attendees at a conference in Sacramento last week and we look forward to continue sharing the success of our Pathways program. Pathways has distinguished itself as one of PCC's landmark programs and other colleges are looking to it as a model for their own operations. Our accreditation uh, report continues to receive public feedback through our website and uh, the board will also be providing the feedback to our accreditation liaison officer, Dr. Kathy Scott by the 18th of March is the deadline, right, Dr. Scott? And uh, next, the document will be going through our shared governance groups before it comes to the board for final approval. But I want to make something very clear to everybody that this is a very serious business. Under the two-year rule, 
the federal government has made it very clear to the commission that colleges have two years to fix the problems, to fix the recommendations that the commission gives to the college. Now, when we submit our report to the commission in October, and we get the visit sometimes in October or November, and the commission hears the conclusion of the team that will be visiting us, we will know about the action taken by the commission at the end of January. By then, it'll be the 19th month. If for whatever reason that action is a negative action, we will only have five months left to fix the problems that we have because the federal government has made it very clear that colleges cannot take longer than two years to fix their problem. And I want one thing to be very clear, that we are all working very hard because we believe in our school, we believe in the success of our students, and we want this to be successful. But for whatever reason, if anything were to happen, we could find ourselves at that point in a show cause uh, status. And we don't want this to happen to us. And can I can assure you that we will all, the Board of Trustees, college administration, faculty, staff, management, we will all work together to ensure that we get out of this probationary status. And I also want to commend two of our students, Dante Chambers and Jesse Rogers, for the gold awards at the speech and debate state championships in Concord last weekend. Chambers earned his award in the international public debate category, and Rogers won for her prose interpretation performance. Three other PCC students took home medals from the contest, and 18 students competed at this level overall. This was indeed wonderful work by our students, trained by our very own faculty and staff. And this week, our piano department is hosting the internationally acclaimed pianist, Boris Slutsky of the Peabody Conservatory for a series of master classes and a recital this Saturday. We are so pleased to offer an artist in residence program that gives our students to world access to world class performers in this way. If you would like to hear the performance this Saturday, come to Westerbeck Hall at 7 p.m. And I know invitations have been sent out to everybody. This concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Verdian. We'll now go on to announcements by shared governance representatives and the Board of Trustees. We'll start with President Morales. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back from spring break. I really hope you guys all enjoyed your week off, which for most of us wasn't a week off, but um, I also wanted to say that um, our lobby committee f was able to go to DC this past weekend, thanks to all of you guys also for helping our students go to their trips. I know Puente Clave asked to go to some trips and thanks to you guys, they were able to go. And I was inspired from lots of students that came back saying that that changed their lives, going to other universities and getting to know those universities, especially some of our minority, minority groups that were able to go um, to those campuses and never realized how great of a campus that can be. And just hearing that that is their dream school starting from now makes me very happy as a student. So I wanna thank all of you guys for that. Um, something that I wanna, well, wanna want you guys to, to know that St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. Our AS is hosting an event, also a movie night tomorrow called um, the theory of everything, so you guys are welcome to come. Um, they're gonna be there's gonna there's going to be delicious German food outside tomorrow afternoon. It's from Berlin, so you guys are welcome to come and at least grab a little bite. Um, and also another movie night. We're gonna have some you know nachos and popcorn. So again, you guys are also welcome in that. And that's all for my report. Thanks again and welcome back. How eclectic, German food for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's also puppies. I know Dr. Verdeen loves the little small puppies, so they'll be out there for you guys tomorrow, too. Thank you, President Morales. Miss Santa Patrico, that's what <laughs> 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 President Verdeen would say. Miss Williams. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Mitchell. Oh. I'm sorry, Miss Mitchell. Good evening. Uh, the Classified Senate will be sending out information regarding the student 
Scholarship and the Michael Buckhouse Memorial Scholarship for classified staff. We are also planning our classified day um, staff development event that will be held in June. And we are also preparing a team to attend the Classified Leadership Institute that's also in June. And the uh, strand of will be regarding e uh, equality. And that's all we have. Thank you very much, Ms. Mitchell. Mr. Futner. Yes, we're actually planning our Classified Recognition Day. So following in the wake of that last report, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Fetner. Ms. Fleming. Hi, good evening. On behalf of uh, President Foster, there's a couple of things we'd like to update the board uh, about concerning the Academic Senate. Uh, the Executive Committee uh, recommended and the, the board approved uh, two positions recently for the Academic Senate. One is a CTE liaison and another is a legislative liaison. So our hope is that these faculty members will serve in a role to inform uh, PCC about things that are happening in terms of career and technical education as well as state and national legislation. And we hope that those liaisons will be able to work with the representatives from the board um, in those respective areas. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we also wanted to um, just remind the board that we are taking accreditation very, very seriously, um, and we've played a very, very active role uh, in helping the college to meet the recommendations. Uh, we fully understand what the two-year rule means and what the ramifications are if the college doesn't meet those recommendations. And so as a result, uh, President Foster has worked to make sure that the faculty is well aware of this follow-up report, the work that needs to be done. Um, she's canvassed the college to make sure that the faculty are actively participating. Uh, in just the last seven months, the Academic Senate has approved uh, close to 80 faculty on various committees um, so that we're increasing the faculty involvement in shared governance. Um, we've also made sure that we have agendized the actual report so that the Senate board is reviewing it and providing feedback so we don't have any surprises at the end when we need to approve that document before we send it forward to the board with our recommendations. Um, and so we're, we're working very hard to make sure that uh, we have a successful accreditation visit following the follow-up report. And in that vein, we, I, I have a feeling I know what Lenora's spring break was like. Um, and so I, we, we need to thank her for stepping up and being in this position um, and doing this work. And we need to also thank Dr. Scott for her leadership and accreditation. And on behalf of the Academic Senate and the faculty, I'd like to echo uh, Julie Kiotis's sentiments to Dr. Miller. Um, we're very appreciative of everything that he's done for the college, and we know the impact that he's had, and we wish him the best as he moves on to this next adventure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's move to the reports by the board. Let's start with Trustee Bond. Welcome back from spring break. Um, this week, the students um, have, are they're very busy uh, catching up with their, their schoolwork, especially since we had that break. Um, the election packets have been out since Monday, and um, the s President Morales and I are very excited for the upcoming elections for next fall. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Trustee Vaughn. Trustee Brown. Sure, so um, the KPCC committee met last Thursday to discuss the college strategic plan with KPCC. There was a lot of very important and valuable information that was shared during that meeting. So I recommended to Dr. Verdiem that we have because I didn't feel comfortable not having the entire board because KPCC is a very big and important thing for the college. So I recommended that we have a study session. So that will be to inform all of us and we all can participate and hear what's going on and plan accordingly. So that will be upcoming. So that's my report. 
Thank you for chairing that subcommittee, Trustee Brown. Trustee Hilsman. Just briefly, I uh, also second what uh, Trustee Brown had said about the uh, KPC C meeting. I think there's some interesting uh, developments in the offing. Uh, thanks to Alex uh, Buckelhide, who's going to be doing some work there and coordinating. Um, and also, as we mentioned before, I was at the uh, executive board and board of directors meeting of the foundation, uh, which I'll keep you apprised of as we go along. Thank you, Trustee Hilsman. Trustee Osterling. Um, thank you. So on uh, February 29th, uh, President Wah and I attended the LAXTA meeting, Los Angeles County School Trustees Association, and I'll give you a very brief report. First of all, a lot of um, other community colleges have been beset by what I call ambulance chaser attorney firms suing them for violation of the Voting Rights Act. The good news is, is that we at PCC will not be subjected to those kind of lawsuits because we are already uh, divided up into uh, districts or, or trustee seats, so enough on that. Uh, but also the next thing coming up is SB 415, uh, which long story short will require um, most community colleges in many cities that are on off-year election cycles, as we are, to convert over to uh, even year election cycles. That's it for the uh, LAXTA meeting, uh, but I did want to um, uh, um, just follow up on what President Morales said and Superintendent Verdian. Um, the students uh, put their spring break to good work. I was reading the various activities they were involved in and wanted to thank the faculty that uh, uh, helped and supported them to do that and also commend the students that went up to Sacramento and performed so well in the, in the uh, debate. And last and finally, uh, the financial presentation we got on the, the refunding, uh, I would like to um, echo my commendation uh, to Bob and Joe and their staff. The uh, Pesky Audit and Budget Committee, uh, uh, these are very complicated matters and we bugged them with lots and lots of questions, and they came through and answered them all, and poor Joe was uh, under the weather with severe bronchitis and showed up at the committee meeting on uh, Monday to get, get all that finalized. And um, it's really important because I think we're demonstrating to our taxpayers that we're trying to be as responsible as possible with their money, but still for the, the, uh, the goals of the school and we are gonna be coming back to the taxpayers possibly in the near future with a uh, significant bond offer request um, uh, for the, uh, the, the master plan. And so it's important to show them that we're being very um, thoughtful and careful with their money. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Trustee Osterling. And I wanna add that Trustee Osterling enjoyed the dinner at Laxa so much that he's agreed to run for a director position coming up in the election. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was arm twisted by my president. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Trustee Martin. Um, nothing to report, but I'm just reflecting on, I'm probably the only one in the room who has been at this moment before where I was part of the college and had to watch Bob Miller go. But I will say that that, reflecting back on that moment, gives me hope that there might be still yet a day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know where I'm going. I don't have to say it. So congratulations, Bob. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Trustee Martin. Trustee Fellow. Thank you. On behalf of my wife, Clara, who's also a member of the PCC Foundation and sp speaks very highly of you and is a big champion of what you do, uh, we just both want to wish you um, Best wishes in your new endeavor, and um, good luck to you, Bob. <coughs> Thank you, Trustee Fellow. Thank you, Trustee Selvage. Uh, two brief items. Uh, I will uh, usually jump at any opportunity to put on my uh, John Muir High School Letterman jacket. Mm. I did so uh, oh, yeah. recently when uh, Trustee Brown and uh, Dr. Bell and I uh, went to John Muir High School uh, for a uh, celebration and an event uh, in which the Los Angeles Dodgers were thanked for plowing a whole bunch of money into a baseball field there at John Muir High School. Now, uh, how many people here went to Muir? Come on, somebody else raised your hand. Okay, well, well Jackie Robinson <laughs> went to Muir. 
And so did Mac Robinson. And uh, then he came here, and we've got all the heritage and the, uh, the legacy and all that. But it was really great to uh, go to that event. It was hot. Uh, we had a whole bunch of members of the extended Robinson family there, and we had a great time. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Verdian <coughs> excuse me, stole my thunder on the uh, recital this Saturday. So uh, please show up. That. Please show up. Just to tell you next time, I will check with you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Selvage. Just um, quickly that um, we did have a, a really great uh, turnout for the AAPI Symposium. We had over 200 students and parents, and I want to thank the staff for doing such a great job getting everyone um, in counseled and getting them on pathways. So it was very highly spoken of. I went to several community events afterwards, and they were still talking about it. Um, so as... Um, <coughs> Trustee Osterling said we were both at the LAXTA meeting and one of the upcoming events for LAXTA will be here in um, at PCC on April 25th and will be on workforce so CTE is very close to my heart and something I hope that all of us will go to. We're going to have a special student rate and I encourage the students to come because we'll be bringing in the young invincibles. We'll talk about the millennials and the trends. So one of the things I see that didn't make it into our packets was the board activity reports and so I I had listed the uh, Strong Workforce website, and I hope the trustees will take advantage and take a look at it. It includes data from the Launch Board 2.0. And one of the handouts I had included was, um, it shows the difference of the salaries of someone who has not yet taken a Skills Builder course and then someone who has taken two Skills Builder courses. And the difference in salaries is something like from 17,000 to 40,000. I mean, it's tremendous jump and opportunities to kind of focus our students and get them on uh, a strong career path in uh, industries where they're, uh, they're going to make a huge difference economically. Um, and uh, there was a joint meeting of the CCLC, the CEOs and the trustees. There are a number of legislative issues that were discussed. Among those was the AB 2222, um, the transit bill, but also the zero text uh, book workforce and um, Cal Grants. So hopefully the trustees will take a look at those, uh, those notes. They'll get sent out. And um, I think that's it. So. Uh, uh, President, well, I think also you should remind folks about the trustee coffee that we're having. Thank you very much, Trustee Hilsman. So uh, yeah, there is going to be a coffee with the trustees. So we have four, four trustees who will be attending with the classified coffees. It's open to everyone. And so we look forward to meeting with the classified staff and hearing from you all. Okay, so uh, no further reports. We will um, look at the future proposed business dates. We have an upcoming meeting with the uh, joint meeting with associated students and so President Morales, um, if any of the trustees have things that they would like uh, to hear from the associated students, forward them to me so I can get them to Trustee Bond trustee and President Morales. So we look forward to hearing that, and then we'll have a joint meeting with PUSD on a Thursday, so not our regular Wednesday meeting. I believe, Trustee Osterling, you did bring up a change in the calendar for October, and though it's not listed here. So um, we could consider that. We will consider that for October, right? Correct. Right, so in October, the ACCT will be having their conference on October 5th, and I think that conflicts with our meeting date. So um, if the trustees are open to approving a change in that date, how would we do that, Doc, Dr. Verdian? We will bring that uh, for your action next at uh, the next board meeting. Okay. We'll either recommend a change of date or we'll cancel that specific date meeting and if we don't have any agenda item, we'll think about it. We'll bring something to you next week. Right, I think it'd be good to do it at the next board meeting rather than waiting till October. So for the trustees to look at your calendars and make sure that they can make a change. Okay, are there any proposed future agenda items? Um, so I do want to call your attention to the master calendar. Ms. Thompson has updated the master calendar, so take a look at all of the um, events that are coming up on the master calendar. And I've asked to incorporate um, the dates for the reports that trustees have requested. And even if the dates are not firm, President Verdian will work uh, towards <coughs> finalizing those dates, but we'll give some estimated, some ETAs, so that would be great. Okay, no other issues before the board. This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>